Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a while since I've made a video. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk with you and tell you why I haven't been around because it's been a crazy two weeks. Basically, I have the flu. Um, for the first week of January, I was doing great. And then second week on Tuesday the 9th, I just felt really funky, was not feeling super great. Um, luckily I didn't work on Tuesdays so I had like the day to kind of recoup. Um, in my head I'm thinking okay I'll be fine tomorrow. <laughs> no. I just kind of got progressively more achy as the day went on and kept getting like really cold so by the time I started to really notice symptoms I was like in three layers of clothing and a winter down jacket um, and I was like maybe I should check my temperature <laughs> I checked it and it was 103 so <laughs> I called mom because she's a nurse and I'm like okay this is kind of bad right <laughs> and she's like okay well just hang in there I'm gonna be coming home soon and within an hour it went from 103 to 105.5 which at 104 your blood is like boiling so you need to go to the hospital <laughs> so I was fast boiling really out of it wasn't thinking straight didn't even think to take Tylenol to kind of help with the fever even though people are telling me to take it it's not registering in my brain mom is like I'm on my way we're taking you to the hospital right now drive me to the ER that whole car ride I'm just kind of really like kind of spacing out my eyes keep going kind of blurry we managed to kind of get me to reception and I remember them asking what's wrong and me telling them and I slowly start to just kind of tip backwards so they were like immediately like get her wheelchair she can't stand <laughs> 15 people in the waiting room like at least and basically they took my temperature my heart rate was not good my blood pressure was like through the roof or non-existent I can't remember which one it was but it was not a good blood pressure <laughs> they immediately were like all right she's jumping ahead they put me into triage and get me kind of in the system and then they take me to this place called the pit which is kind of like an in-between section where they can get stuff done that they need to get done while they're getting a little room kind of ready for you my first kind of he wasn't a doctor but he wasn't a nurse I'm trying to think what he was anyways his name was Max Max immediately starts an IV in this arm he puts it kind of like where they normally do like right in here you can kind of still see you can't really on here but there's a little tiny dot he put the first IV in there was drawing so much blood it was ridiculous there were like four vials like normal vial size and then there were two that were literally like they were like that big around and like that tall full of blood like it was I've never in my life seen blood draws that big so I was like wow this is interesting but they did two IVs so then they put the other one this is why Max was a superhero he put the other one right here no one except like one other person in the history of my entire life has ever managed to hit that spot those veins always look so inviting for doctors to be like okay this is a great vein to get an IV in and it always like fakes them out it's like haha pick me pick me psych I'm I've disappeared and you can't find me and it is like the most frustrating thing because it's one of the most painful spots and he hit it first try and I was just like okay this is miraculous you're a, a superhero what this is your superpower <laughs> while he's doing that IV then this lady comes in hooks up all these things I don't know what they did but they checked my heart because they wanted to make sure that nothing was going on there because of the fever and everything like that and then after all those tests they finally did the flu test and let me tell you it was traumatizing they took this long it was like about this long little bendable plastic thing with this little 
kind of, it almost looked like a little makeup applique, like the kind that comes in the little packaging uh, at the tip, but smaller. And then they shoved it up my nose and down into the back of my throat. Like they didn't just swab the back of my throat, they went through the nose, down there, then pulled it back out, and then did the other side. So I had to do that twice. It was the most like uncomfortable, I just, like this side didn't hurt as much, but this side, I don't know what was happening back here, but oh man, I cursed at Max and then had to like thoroughly apologize. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Um, but it was very traumatizing. They finally got my little room thing ready. So they wheeled me into there and then immediately started giving me IV fluids. And normally they give you like one bag at a time. They gave me four bags at once in two IVs. So they had two bags per IV going into each arm, full throttle. Like it wasn't just a drip, drip, drip. It was like, <sighs> they basically freezed me out. Like I was pretty sure I was hypothermic, <laughs> like the way they were doing this. It was like ice going into my veins. They wouldn't give me any kind of um, blanket or anything like that because I'm my blood's boiling, they don't want to add more heat onto me, they want to cool me down. <laughs> I'm literally like laying in the bed, my hands are like this. That's how much I'm shaking, it's so cold. It was just like the most traumatic <laughs> Thing. like halfway through the four bags of fluids to also put in a smaller bag of like antibiotics um, so I got another little fluid bag with antibiotics in it then after the four bags went in they did another liter so that's five liters in me at this point within probably two hours they also had like a blood pressure cuff on me that went off every half hour but it kept getting like Skewer, skewed so it was never on correctly like mom have to, had to keep readjusting it and it kept sliding down my arm as well but every time it was skewed the machine would go off and it wouldn't realize that it was as tight as it should be um, it kept thinking my arm was not fully wrapped up with it so it kept going tighter and tighter I actually had a bruise right here from it squeezing me far too hard. It was so painful. That was actually when I just started, like they had me so hydrated that every time it squeezed too hard, my eyes just started crying. <laughs> Cause I was just like, ah. <laughs> I'm like over freezing and getting pinched and it just was really traumatic. <laughs> and they also have given me two things of Tylenol and a huge ibuprofen as well as, uh, I think it's called Theraflu. Um, they gave me a dose of that. And also somewhere in between the four bags and the fifth bag, they did a chest x-ray to make sure my lungs were not like filling up with fluid or anything like that. My tests finally come back that I have influenza A. Um, and there are apparently like eight other people in the ER at that exact moment with some form of flu. Like it was the most flu crazy season apparently that they've ever experienced. So finally the doctor is like, all right, you have this. Your fever is slowly going down. It's not where it should be, um, but you're not septic anymore. So that's good. <laughs> we decided and they definitely agreed that um, they should keep me overnight for monitoring. So that's what they did. They admitted me at about midnight. <laughs> so I was in the ER from probably like 5.36 to midnight um, and then they got a room ready and I they wheeled me up and put me in a room and then basically put a giant thing on the door for anyone coming in that they were required to wear masks. So I <laughs> was basically in kind of like a quarantine um, and then they gave me a sixth liter of fluid but they didn't have it running openly they had it like drip drip dripping throughout the night which was a lot easier to handle than just like it all flowing into me at once and they uh, set up a cot for my mom because she was gonna stay there with me um, and she had gone home to take care of the kitties and get some supplies um, like clothing and stuff for the next day and then she came back around 2 
And I just had like the nicest nurses. They were amazing taking care of me. My first nurse, Courtney, I was like just blown away by how sweet and nice she was. Like it was literally like the soul of your like your grandmother in like this younger person's body and just like, do you need anything? What can I do for you? Calling me sweetheart and it was just like, oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> then um, at about three, they had called in my doctor, not my personal doctor, I've never met this guy in my life, but kind of the physician's company that I go to, uh, called in one of their specialists to come in and kind of talk it over with me and check on me and stuff. And I was like, you did not have to wake this guy up from his house to come and check on me. Like, we're just monitoring me, but they did it anyways and it, he was super nice. I just had like the best staff taking care of me, it was amazing. And like throughout the next day, I was still at like 102, 103 fever wise, like it just wasn't dropping. I ended up getting like super nauseous about 9 a.m., 10 a.m., so I needed a bucket <laughs> at that point. And meanwhile, the people from like food services are calling, it's like, does she want breakfast? And it's like, no, she really doesn't. I'm like vomiting right now can't handle food. <laughs> they sent me home at about 2.30 or 3 with my little bucket. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, throughout that time, mom had all of a sudden started developing a pretty bad cough, was starting to get feverish, so she ended up getting the flu as well. Um, however, hers went a lot quicker. I spent the next several days not being able to eat, like just the smell of any kind of food had me just violently ill, um, especially eggs. Thanks for that, mom. Um, <laughs> I didn't eat anything for five days is basically. Um, I had like one thing of mashed potatoes and that was just not good at all. And then like two days in, I was just feeling like I'd been hit by a bus and a semi all in one, like it was just brutal. I was so weak I couldn't even open like the little can of pop, like it took me, ooh where'd that fuzz come from? It took me like five minutes to open that little tab on a little can of ginger ale, <laughs> like it was ridiculous. The muscles just hurt and I couldn't use them, it was, I've never felt so useless in my entire life, I'm just like, I'm laying here, I don't know what to do. Probably the worst case of the flu I've ever experienced in my life. I've never had it last this long, ever. Like I usually get like those 24 hour ones and they suck and you feel like you're dying for 24 hours and then you're fine. This I was like, no, I'm pretty sure my body's trying to kill me and then had to go to the ER and then just lay around doing nothing for two weeks. In theory, laying around doing nothing sounds great but when you are forced to relax and do nothing and your body is just useless, it is the most infuriating thing. Like, I've never been so bored in my life. I'm just like, ugh, get me out of here. I wanna do stuff, I wanna hang out with people, I wanna go to work, I want to like exist in the world, and I can't because I can't do crap. Like, ugh, it was so frustrating. But yeah, and my work has been so nice about this. Like. They're like, oh, feel better. They check in on me. They call me sometimes just to be like, hey, how are you feeling? Like, everybody's been so nice about this. <laughs> and I feel like such like a failure. Like, I can't do anything to kind of help exist in the world. <laughs> it's very weird. Hopefully my doctor will clear me to go back to work. Yeah, we'll see what happens, but that is basically where I've been for the past several weeks and why I've not uploaded anything and why I didn't even do my December obsessions. Like, I was gonna film it that day, actually. That Tuesday that I went into the hospital, I was gonna film my December favorites and then it just didn't happen because I was so friggin' sick. <laughs> but anyways, that has been what has happened these past couple weeks. I'm so sorry I haven't been here um, uploading weekly, um, but I'm hopefully going to try and get back into the swing of things and I'm just going to have to combine January and December's obsessions into one video. So that'll be fun. Hopefully you guys have not encountered the flu, but if you have, 
I wish you the speediest of recoveries. Um, it sucks. I, I know exactly how you feel. Trust me. Thanks for watching, guys. Remember to give this video a like. Subscribe if you're new or haven't done so yet. And if you'd like to get notified when I post new videos, which will hopefully start being every week again, click that bell somewhere down there. That'll let you know. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Is my bun just ginormous? All right, pardon. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Fuzz everywhere. Just flew. What is happening? Where'd my brain go? I sound like a weird tugboat, like burp, burp. <laughs>